Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition and Life Podcast. This is where we look at various nutrition and fitness-related topics through the lens of application. We want to give you practical takeaways so that you can create your healthiest, best self backed by knowledge. Now, on to the episode with your host, Coach Lisa. Hello and welcome back to the Nutrition and Live podcast. My name is Lisa, I'm your host, and in today's episode, I want to share some of my dieting history with you, my training background, how I got into nutrition coaching, and some of my goals for 2023. Before we get into it, though, if you are new to the podcast, please do me a favor and subscribe to rate it, to share it on your social media. It really is the best way to help us grow. And if you are a returning listener, welcome back. So who am I? Who is Lisa? I am originally from Germany. I have lived there until 2009, but then moved to New Zealand until 2019. I have been traveling for the last four years and I'm currently in Colombia. Why did I get into nutrition coaching? What is my nutritional background? I'm going to try to do it somewhat or explain it somewhat chronologically. Of course, I could just talk about the specific dates when it comes to my certifications, my degrees, etc. But that is probably not what you want to hear. Of course, I will put that in there because it's part of my story. But overall, I'm going to share a bit more about my own personal struggles when it comes to finding my way with nutrition coaching and training. So when I was growing up, I never really had any issues with weight. My mom always cooked somewhat healthy and I was simply very active. I was swimming, I was running, I was doing track and field. And so I really never had to think too much about food. When I finished high school in 2009 and I started traveling for a year around the world and stopped exercising regularly and just you know partying too much eating whatever I wanted um, I put on about 15 to 20 pounds and didn't like that thankfully I had already been accepted to the European Sports University in Cologne where I started my degree, but then got a scholarship to finish my degree in exercise science at AUT in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, So when I started my studies, my first teacher there, she basically just taught us more about portion control and calories, but not to the extent of this is how much you should be consuming at maintenance or in a calorie deficit, etc. She simply made me more aware of portion sizes. So I reduced my portion sizes, you know, how at the back of a muesli or whatever package it usually says, and this is one like 25 grams as a serving size. And most people just fill up the bowl. Well, that's what I used to do. And then I suddenly started becoming a bit more mindful of that. So some of the weight that I had gained already came off from that. My next teacher, she was very much an advocate of a low-fat diet, very old school, 90 sort of thing. So I started buying low-fat yogurt, becoming super aware of um, the fat content and everything else, staying away from fatty meats and so on, and lost a little bit more of the weight. The teacher after that, she advocated a low-carb diet. So I started cutting out or becoming really afraid, actually, of bread, of rice. It got to an extent where I was very terrified of fruit, even. Just so that I would restrict throughout the week, because, of course, you know, combining small sizes, small portion sizes, low fat, low carb, everything together. Of course, I was very, very much in a calorie deficit at the time, but then started that unhealthy food relationship where you fantasize about food. You have these food dreams, these cheat day dreams. And essentially on the weekends, I would very much binge or um, not have any carbs all day and then pretty much eating a quarter of a cake in the evening, those sorts of things. So throughout that whole time, I did already kind of get into structured exercise, more like body weight training, back into yoga and running and half marathons and so on. 
And in 2014, I found CrossFit and um, I was really terrified of looking as muscly as most CrossFitters I had seen, but I was just so bored with my training regime that I knew I needed or wanted something else. And I fell in love with the variety of CrossFit. I fell in love with never knowing what's coming up, always something different and simply the progress that I saw as well when it came to lifting the weights. I'm very much of a numbers person, so it was super addictive for me um, in, on that front. And I, um, at the same time, discovered paleo because paleo and CrossFit at the time, 2014, very much went hand in hand, paleo or zone diet. So paleo essentially meaning, you know, just eating what your ancestors were supposed to have found. So very low carb in most cases also. Nonetheless, I did already realize that in order to become stronger, I did need to eat more. So that was actually a healthy or a step into a healthier direction. Um, so I implemented more healthy fats again still very afraid of carbs though because again with paleo you're really not allowed to eat any any grains or anything that's processed like cereal etc and I always thought there is there's got to be a different way there has to be more to life than this I thought that from a very early age onwards that life is not just about doing your nine or 10 hours at work and coming home and, you know, going through the steps and that extended to food as well. Food, in my opinion, was always something that should enrich your life, but it had come to a point where, yes, when I was eating, I was enjoying my meals, but I was always thinking about food. I was just not, not free at all. So at some point I stumbled, thankfully, upon an article by someone called Nicole Caperzo. She was very big in the CrossFit space at the time. And she wrote in this article, which was titled, How Donuts Gave Me Abs and a 90 kg Snatch. So for those of you who don't know, 90 kgs is very, very heavy for um, a female lifter in in lifting a snatch. So I thought to myself, I want, want all these three things. I want donuts, I want abs, and I want um, a 90 kg snatch. <laughs> so essentially, I soaked up the article in which she explained that she had gone from simply eating um, clean all the time to macro tracking and her body composition and performance had improved so much by doing that. In the article, she didn't go too much into, you know, how to set your calories, how to set your macros, but I just continued to do my own research as in my exercise science degree. They really didn't get into that all that much or at all, really, unfortunately. Um, thankfully, many people, when they just enter a random target into their calorie trackers and start off on their own without a nutrition coach. Thankfully, when I entered mine at the time, I actually put in there, I just want to stay at the same weight. Um, or I might've even put in there, I want to build muscle, whatever. Um, and I had a very high activity level at the time, you know, I was training six days a week, at least two hours a day, sometimes twice a day. And so my fitness pal actually gave me as a calorie target like 2,500 calories and I blindly followed that. Um, I did realize that I was eating a lot more fats than I thought. Again, through paleo, I had started eating things, drinking things like bulletproof coffee, a whole avocado in a day. And nonetheless, I was always hungry. I was always, always had super, super high cravings just because my carbs were so low. So simply um, by like my calories beforehand were probably even higher than um, those 2,500 calories or so that my fitness pal initially gave me. But my protein was lower than I thought. Um, and again, my fats were higher. So I probably reduced my calories a little bit by going into 2,500. Um, but by eating more carbs and more protein, my body composition improved very quickly. My performance improved very quickly. I felt so much freedom. That's the only way I can explain it because suddenly I had the permission to eat everything. Suddenly everything made sense. I know a lot of people, they struggle with macro tracking. They find it restrictive. What I will say here is that A, oftentimes they don't give it a long enough go. B, their calories are probably set to restrictive. And C, they try too hard to be exact with their calorie and macro targets as opposed to just aiming, you know, for to be 
50 or 100 calories within the target, maybe being a bit more flexible on the weekends, not stressing too much about the exact carb and fat distributions. So, and for me, it, it just makes sense. Not everyone is as much of a numbers person as I am, but it gave me structure in order to create freedom. You know how they always say like structure essentially creates freedom and that 100% applied for me. Suddenly I could have a small piece of brownie and I learned to enjoy certain things in moderation and my cravings were gone for the most part. So I continued with these higher calories um, and a performance focus for another so I started that in 2016 just as I started working as a police officer because actually after my exercise science degree I kind of felt like I don't really know what to do with that I um or well I started with the police a little bit earlier but anyway after my my exercise science degree didn't really know what I wanted to do with that I didn't want to be a personal trainer so I just pivoted <laughs> And started working uh, as a frontline police officer, which um, was a very interesting experience. I learned a lot about myself. I learned to be more patient. I learned um, I was very, very naive growing up or I grew up very sheltered, let me put it that way. So working as a police officer for some time certainly opened up my eyes to a lot of things. Not saying that I don't believe in the good in people anymore, <laughs> But my first weeks on the job, my 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 colleagues, they actually said, like, Lisa, you are just so grain behind the ears. Whenever I would interview anybody, I would be like believing everything that they said. And they were like, no, clearly this guy stole this and that. We have it on camera just because he says otherwise <laughs> doesn't mean it's true. No, OK, it wasn't quite as bad. But still, anyway, <clears throat> very interesting experience. Nonetheless, whenever I was at work, I would already be thinking about my training. I as I had um encountered macros I started telling people at the gym about it and like my mind my head was just it was training and nutrition so I knew that eventually I wanted to get back there and on top of that the shift work with police just was too much for my body my hormones started to decline to go down the hill my mental health started to decline go down the hill because I was consistently only sleeping like four hours on average and that is just simply not healthy so as soon as I realized I wanted to get out of the shift work I also realized I wanted to work location free I started doing additional nutrition certifications for example through the nutritional sort of um, coaching institute NCI various um, certifications with them I started interning, I started 2018 working with or getting a coach for myself. I actually had three different coaches just to see different coaching styles, not at the same time, obviously. But I, th I truly think one of the best ways to get into nutrition coaching is getting a coach yourself you will learn so much through that probably more or just as much as through various certifications so that anyway when I knew I wanted to finish with the police I had already built up um, part-time work with an amazing nutrition coaching company called Tailored Coaching Method shout out to the boss Cody who is just an amazing human being and I have learned so much from him he really got me into self-development things I love his podcast all so if you are not already familiar with TCM, Tailored Coaching, Coaching Method, please head over to um, whatever they are doing because they are putting out amazing content also. So anyway, that was 2018, 2019. I officially finished with the police and started full-time coaching with TCM. In 2018 as well, um, I had various injuries. When it comes to CrossFit, unfortunately, after my first few successful years or great years where I saw a lot of um, improvements in strength, um, I was fittest policewoman in New Zealand three years in a row and you know I thought I would actually be great but in comparison to other people I was still <laughs> very much um yeah not not as strong as many crossfitters are anyway and I realized that I started having injuries from overtraining and some personal issues there as well so I was essentially forced to stop with crossfit which it initially was a very big hit for me because it gave me so much joy in my day as well and I loved the community aspect and everything else and so I transitioned into just pure strength training in 2018 
um, not doing any more cardio aside from from walking and so on. And that was really difficult mentally because I am someone I came from a place of, you know, always doing more is better, going harder is better. And if you're not sweating, lying down on the ground at the end of your workout, it wasn't a good workout. So learning that that is actually a untrue and b not necessary and c actually often harmful for you also when it comes to hormones when it comes to you know already being sleep deprived and so on um it was difficult though and i didn't start enjoying just structured strength training probably until at least three months into it until i started seeing the body composition changes because my body was getting letting go of some stress my body was being more shaped into the direction that I wanted to. And so many clients nowadays come from a similar background and I can relate to that struggle so, so much. The struggle of allowing yourself to rest more, allowing or recognizing that actually more training is not usually better and that that adrenaline release from a workout doesn't necessarily mean it's a great workout like that sweat and whatever. So I get it. I totally, totally get it. But we often have to remind ourselves of what we actually want. Are you going to be top CrossFitter? Are you, uh, is your main focus to have more of a cardiovascular health? Or what you really want is that actually just shaping your body and looking good and having, you know, a little bit of a baseline fitness? Because if that truly is your goal, then strength training simply is superior when it comes to shaping your body and metabolism as well than simply that then then unstructured high intensity exercise otherwise why would the kings of um, aesthetics like the bodybuilders etc why wouldn't they be doing this kind of training why um why that that just simply doesn't make sense but it took me a while to actually feel that because I had found so much joy in CrossFit previously and now I am of the conviction that it's still a great sport it can still get a lot of people um you know very fit very active etc it can be um, a great way to start with with barbells with dumbbells and all of that so certainly nothing wrong with that however we also need to recognize days where it's better to go easier. We need to recognize what our true goals are. And um, we need to recognize if we have a, an already stressful life, that it might not be very conducive to your overall health. So anyway, since then, I have only been strength training. Since then, I have also started doing my master's or I have done my master's degree at the University of California in Pennsylvania throughout the pandemic. That was later on then. Um, so as I um kind of back paddling, sorry if I'm jumping around in years here, but as I was going into more of the structured strength training, reducing my training amount, I also reduced the calories down from that really high amount and during my CrossFit times, more into um, a, an, an actual maintenance level, not so performance focused. And I basically stayed there until, um, yeah, until last year where I did realize that actually my, because I had been building more muscles or recomping at maintenance essentially over the the last few years, um, I, I have been more hungry again. I have had um, more thoughts about food or I, I felt like I wasn't truly at maintenance anymore. And so I decided I wanted to do a lean gaining phase, which I have started in September just in this last year. So four months ago, as I have shared before. But anyway, essentially until then from stopping CrossFit up until um, that point, I was pretty much just recomping at, at maintenance. I never did a a pure um, weight loss phase or anything like that. Um, I was very focused on building my own business once I had decided to leave tailored coaching method in 2021. And the reason why I wanted to leave or actually was more of a, an, 
I was almost pushed to leave from my internal self <laughs> because I just felt like in order to continue growing personally, that's what I wanted to do. Um, I had loved working for someone else these first few years because I really wanted to focus on just becoming a better coach, on learning, learning, learning initially, as opposed to having to focus on client acquisition, on um, you know building your website and all this other stuff. So Again, highly recommended for anyone who wants to start off as a nutrition coach, work for someone else first. That would be my my very big takeaway from that. And I have been so fortunate that throughout or since I had started nutrition coaching in life, the company, I have been able to bring Coach Tammy and Coach Laura on board as well and simply playing into the field of, you know, what, what interests me at the time? What do I want to nourish at the time? And so one thing that uh, has come up for me for this year is that many of our coaches or our, our clients are fellow coaches or people who already know quite a bit about nutrition as well. And I really want to keep growing a nice community for them to talk more about research, to also keep studying myself now that I've finished my master's and just it's actually a way to hold myself accountable that I will continue to read research on a regular basis also and, and simply yeah, having a place where I can um, share my thoughts where we can contemplate things where we can discuss things because I know how helpful it was when I was working for a different company um, to have someone to share thoughts with or to bounce thoughts off with and like hey should I reduce those calories with that client down to xyz so if you're interested to join our um, research community the rise please reach out but anyway that is one of my goals the other goal is to continue my lean gaining phase up until April probably at the least or it was March at the least because that would have been would be six months but probably going to go longer than that the reason being is that I in the last year, um, a friend of mine actually um, first said to me, hey, Lisa, have you ever considered a bodybuilding show and my like bikini figure or whatever? Um, and I was like, clearly, no, it, it had never crossed my mind. Uh, I have always been more of a performance person focused on, you know, calisthenics, on pull ups, on lifting heavier and not so much of an like a pure aesthetic focus. Um I'm still not 100% sure that I might do it because I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't want to um, commit to it yet. Um, however, just going into this gaining phase was a good change for me and has also allowed me to relate better to clients that are actually um, or have gone through a specific gaining phase, how it feels to be feel more fluffy from time to time and so on. So that's second um, part of my goals. Uh, aside from that, and in terms of travel, as I mentioned, I'm currently in Colombia. I'm probably going to stay here in Latin America. I don't like the winter very much. <laughs> so I'm going to stay here in Latin America most likely until um, late spring. So like May and June type thing. And usually in the summer, I try to go home to Germany for a couple of months um, to visit family. And that brings me to another goal. Um, I don't share much about real personal stuff I know on my social media and and in general I do on, on occasion share or I share my trainings I share some of my food or my travels and so on but aside from that not necessarily much about my relationships and I think that that is um, a good thing it keeps some things are better kept private and um, I really do want to keep it that way but nonetheless um, I one of my intentions for this year certainly is to overall um, be a bit more vulnerable to communicate better whether that is with my family or my friends whether that is as a leader as um, the leader of this company with my coaches and um, of course just in general to trust my intuition more no matter what it is I really I think I've said this before I really do think that intuition and listening to your body um, is I don't want to say underrated because people are aware of it, but we are so used to suppressing it, to having been taught to suppress it, um, that we do need to reconnect with it 
consciously and that's kind of one of um one of the things that i really want to continue to lean into as well as simply being more aware of growth opportunities and taking them as they come not letting fear hold me back in any way shape or form i generally don't regard myself self as a fearful person i do think i'm rather courageous in most most as aspects but especially when it comes to quick opportunities that pull me out of my structure or my organization I'm sometimes very hesitant <laughs> um, so yes that is the other part of my goals for this new year and just aside from that to continue to learn 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 I love learning um you know anything that interests me whether it's a new sports whether it's in learning to improve my Spanish whether it's learning um, more in the nutrition space and I think that is something that really gives me a deep sense of fulfillment and again that's something I have um, have shared or encouraged before um what can you take away from this podcast other than I guess having to get gotten to know me a little bit better <laughs> um Firstly, when it comes to nutrition, just because something is healthy, it doesn't mean that it's conducive to your goals. If you have gone from restrictive diet to restrictive diet, if you feel like you're constantly thinking about food, if you feel like certain foods are off limits and you feel like there has got to be more, you're doing so much hard work with your nutrition and still you're not where you want to be let me tell you there is a better way reach out for help try macro tracking on your own if you don't want to start off with a coach I'm not saying macro tracking is for everybody but truly to me flexible dieting has given me so much freedom to enjoy life even more to enjoy um social settings to travel to you know do all of this of course it takes practice to get to that point um and of course if we're in steep weight loss phases it's not super super flexible um but generally speaking know that there is a way to live flexibly um and still have have beautiful body comp the beautiful body composition that you're after point number 2 when it comes to training Make sure your training matches up with your goals. So whether, you know, if, if it's performance, that's great. If it's um, aesthetics, think about it. More is not always better. Really adjust your, your lifestyle also in accordance with training and, and nutrition. Not saying, you know, like focusing on the sleep. For me, it was a very hard step admitting that I had quote unquote failed as a police officer I didn't necessarily see it as failure but still you know changing career completely again people are like oh you've only been doing this for a few years um admitting that it's something that you I, I can't quote unquote cannot do cannot tolerate that low amount of sleep was very difficult for me I'm so, generally someone I don't like to give up to fail to lose at something <laughs> to change um too much I guess to disappoint other people so that was difficult but yeah if if your lifestyle is not conducive to your health goals then you are the only person that can make the switch so that is point number two um and then aside from that um i guess the only other thing that i i will say is that learning and continuing um with self development is something that gives me an immense satisfaction and i think a lot of people um because they are they have I guess not been encouraged to learn continue to learn as an adult as much I mean, we often hear about oh here's a course there here's a course here and so on but we just go about our daily lives and forget that growth can give a lot of, is, is work but it can give a lot of satisfaction I guess that would be my three takeaways from that um yeah and I if if any of this resonates with you if you have any questions about anything that I have shared about my story then please reach out please send me a message I always love to hear from you and if you have any other topic suggestions for future podcasts also reach out thank you for listening thank you for being part of my journey and I hope you have a wonderful day thank you for tuning in if you enjoyed today's episode don't forget to subscribe leave a review or share the episode on social. Very much appreciated. You can also follow us on Instagram at Nutrition Coaching and Life or head to our website, 
www.nutritioncoachingandlife.com where we provide more valuable content. Have a wonderful day. Now go out and work on your best self.